after I learned the crisis to remaster is using the PlayStation 5 calibration menu, I was of course looking forward for Crisis 3 and yes, this game also supports the PlayStation 5 HDR calibration menu on the console. And again, I'm quite sure the same counts for the Xbox series, but I can't prove it. The only difference what I found is we have slightly different HDR sliders in the game. And again, I don't understand why we have those sliders in the first place. But as you remember, in Crisis 2 we had uh, the white point limited to 100 and now we have white point limited to 500, which of course gives us a little bit different settings compared to Crisis 2. And to make sure that you understand how crucial the PlayStation 5 HDR calibration on the console is for this game, in terms of the HDR visual quality, I like to show you how to set it up in the correct way, okay? Or let's say like this, in the way what many YouTube channels are recommending, okay? I'm not quite sure, I'm still struggling to Anyway, different story. So what you have, or uh, what you can see at the moment is this symbol and uh, don't follow, please don't follow the instruction here. Uh, what we're doing is we don't want to see this symbol at all. And it really doesn't matter if you're using HGLG or dynamic tone mapping on, or even you're using dynamic tone mapping off the approach in this menu is always the same, okay? So you go until you can't see the symbol at all, you press next, you do exactly the same. Now you can see the symbol and we don't want to see the symbol at all. We're pressing next. Here on this screen, make sure you go all the way down because we like to have the best black level. And that's how you set up your favorite yeah, HDR mode. And now I like to show you what happened if you set this up in the wrong way. And for this test, I'm using HGLG and what we're doing, we're going all the way down till we can't go any further. You know, this is going to be grayed out and the next picture as well or test a pattern. And here we're actually going the complete way up, which is of course completely wrong. And now we're jumping back into the game and I'll show you how it looks like. Okay, so back in the game with the complete wrong settings and uh, just have a look on the background here on the sky. There's literally nothing what you can see because there is at the moment no HDR effect at all, but there is, and I will show you this of course in a second. Also between HGHG and dynamic tone mapping off, there is no difference at all at this very moment. And usually when you have HDR effects, there is a difference between those two modes. Dynamic tone mapping is brighten up the picture as we know it, but again, no HDR effect at this very moment. So let us set up the PlayStation 5 calibration menu in the correct way. Okay, back in the HDR calibration menu on the PlayStation 5 and we're setting up HGIG in the correct way. That means we don't want to see this symbol at all. Now I can barely see it and now I'm going one tick ahead. The same counts for here. Barely visible and now one tick ahead and here we're going the all the way down to make sure our OLED TV can display perfect OLED black. And now we jump it back into the game. Okay, back in the game with the correct settings for HGHG and I'm quite sure you can see a very big difference in terms of HDR in the background because we have actually a lot of details here and with the wrong settings there was nothing and now we have details back and also between dynamic tone mapping off and HGHG there is a difference in terms of the brightness. So this is the proof that the HDR calibration menu on the PlayStation 5 is doing his job and this is what we like. And now of course I like to talk about my recommended settings for this game because, because we have different or let's say like this a HDR white point setting up to 500. It's not that easy that we can just use the HDR calibration menu on the PlayStation 5. Okay, my recommended settings for this game is by the way dynamic tone mapping on because it gives you a much brighter picture and this is what this game needs in my opinion. So make sure you set up the PlayStation 5 HDR calibration menu with dynamic tone mapping on. Go into the game settings for HDR and make sure your white point is set to 260 and HDR brightness is set to 50. Those values are perfect for my LG ZX. Of course, if you're using a different TV, these values can vary, okay? But in my opinion, it really fits my TV and this is what we're ending up very 
bright objects and I was able actually to measure the brightest object what I found with 701 candela in this game which is absolutely fine but we know of course that is it is not about the maximum peak brightness in HDR I really like the appearance from this game when you use HDR especially dynamic tone mapping on but of course you can also play this game in HGHG Okay, so if you like to play this game with HGIG, it's the same approach as with dynamic tone mapping on. Make sure you select the mode what you like to play with, in this case HGIG, in the HDR calibration menu on the PlayStation 5 and set up the menu with this mode selected. Then go to your settings and change the white point to 500 and HDR brightness to 50. This is for my TV the best result and I was able to measure maximum peak brightness on the same object as with dynamic tone mapping on 625 candela compared to 700 candela for dynamic tone mapping on so a little bit of a different uh, maximum peak brightness but also i like the appearance in um, hdhg as well and you don't have this disadvantage of changing the brightness always like dynamic tone mapping is doing okay so recommended mode in my opinion it's still dynamic tone mapping on because you have a little bit of a higher brightness default brightness and also you have higher peak brightness in very bright objects but as always this is absolutely up to you both modes dynamic tone mapping on and hghg are perfectly playable and now you're probably wondering what is with the wrong hdr calibration as i did it in crisis 2 um, very quick explanation if you just or if you haven't watched crisis 2 video my crisis 2 video so what i have done in the playstation 5 calibration menu i have set my hdr picture mode to dynamic tone mapping off calibrated the playstation 5 and then changed it back to hghg and in crisis 2 i found that's the best way to play this game on my lgzx so when i would do uh, i have done of course the same here but it doesn't add up the picture is not very nice to be very honest I don't like it so because the default brightness is just too dark and um, very bright objects like the sun or whatever will just blown out so there is no way that I can have the same picture quality as in crisis 2 with this method that's why I'm not doing it so in my opinion there are just two ways HGHG or dynamic tone mapping on with of course different settings in the um, yeah option menu in the game this is very important because HGHG is just working with 500 um, white point but dynamic tone mapping on if you use 500 white point it will just overblown all the details so that's enough for this video I would say so I'm looking forward for your comments and as always yeah if you're new to my channel you know the drill please subscribe to my channel I would much appreciate it and I think we have to go here to enter the enter the highlight. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Anyway, that's enough for this video. I see you guys next time. Bye.